The heavens declare the glory of God. Can you please turn your Bible to Psalms 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. Did you know how many heavens there are? There are three heavens according to the Bible. Amen? The first heaven is what we can see. Do you know the skies? That is called technically the troposphere. The troposphere. We see the skies, the air we breathe. Where the birds fly, that is also called heaven. Then the second heaven is called the stella. That is where the stars are and the sun and the moon. Amen. That's, what the, that's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. So it's the second heaven. And that's why when you read the Bible... In Genesis 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the King James Version, it says heaven. But if you look at the original Hebrew, it's Hashayim, which means heavens. Anything that ends with an I am in Hebrew is a plural. Um, listen, just follow me for a bit. I know it's a bit too much, but I'm going to teach you the power of God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So when we say cherub, a cherub is one angel. But a cherubim is more than one angel. Are you getting it? A seraph is one angel, but a seraphim is more than one. Are you understanding it? So in the Hebrew, if you look at the New King James Version, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens, the Hashayim, and the earth, the Eretz. So you're following that so far? Okay, praise God. Our atmosphere, and then the stars, and the sun, and the moon, that's the second heaven. But there is a third heaven that the Bible talks about. It's called literally the third heaven. That is where God and his angels live. So the first heaven is what we can see where the birds fly. The second heaven is where the sun and the moon and the stars are. And the third heaven is where God lives. Now, let me prove that to you. So, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 to 4, it says, Paul says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such one caught up to the what? Third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into a paradise, that's the third heaven, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, if you understand the grammar here, Paul was talking about himself. Paul says, I was taken up into where God lives and I saw things that, I, that nobody else saw and I heard things that nobody else could have said. And he says, but I couldn't speak them because they were unspeakable words. So we know now that there are three heavens. But what the problem is, according to Romans chapter 1 and verse 25, it says that the men and the women of this earth are worshipping the created things instead of the creator. 
So we're worshipping the sun and the moons and the stars. That's why, as Christians, get ready for this, we don't believe in reading our stars. Amen. We don't believe in that. Because when we read our stars, we get locked into it and, the, and we start to accept it and then the devil can do what he wants to do. Amen. But we don't read our stars. But what I'm trying to say is, is that I am not bound by the stars. In fact, the Bible makes it very clear that we mustn't follow the stars. Because the stars and the moon and the sun in heaven are made for times and seasons for God's will. So, we know there are three heavens. So now, I'm going to explain something to you that some of you may know, some of you may not know. I'm going to show you the vast power of God. I know that the sun is 93 billion miles away from the earth. And if it was one mile closer, we'd be in trouble. And if it was one mile away, we'd be in trouble. Because we know that God created the heaven and the earth and he made it perfectly. Now according to the scientists, this world is 4.5 billion, billion years old. According to scientists. But according to the Bible that I read, this earth is 6,000 years old. And what they don't realize is that from Adam straight up to now, because they've been all numbered, we can see and know how old the earth is. So when God said, let there be light and let there be the moon to rule by night and let the stars come into its place, we know that it was the second heaven. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you see, where we are placed, we are in outer space right now. Did you know that? We are in space. Praise God. So now what I know is that a few hundred years ago, they used to believe that the earth was hung on the back of an elephant. Did you know that? Now we know that the earth is hung on what? Nothing. Job chapter 26 verse 7. Look what it says here. God stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Now let me say something. God was telling man way before man found out, before they could put satellites in the sky, that I hang the earth on nothing. But they didn't believe God. They wanted to believe it was hung on something. Because in a man's mind, you can't put something on nothing and it stands. Hallelujah. And so the earth is hung on nothing. If I said to you, what was the first book written? What would you all say? Yes, the first book in the Bible, sorry, I should say. Genesis. Well, Genesis was not the first book written in the Bible. The first book written in the Bible was the book of Job. A lot of people don't know that. Job is the oldest book. So if you was going to write the Bible in chronological order, it would go Job, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, but they tried to keep them together. They kept all the books of Moses together. That's why in the book of Job, it tells us about dinosaurs. The Bible talks about dinosaurs. because, And then we used to laugh at the book of Job, the scientists, but until they dug the ground and found dinosaur bones, they said, but the Bible is right again. Come on, church. Are you, I'm talking about God. I'm showing you how powerful God is. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. So in Job chapter 40, it talks about dinosaurs and different things that lived in those great times and how the dinosaur's tail was as big as a cedar tree. And if you measure the cedar tree 
with the bones or the fossils of the, of the dinosaur, it's exactly the same. So let me tell you something, brethren. Those who don't want to believe the Bible, it's up to you. But God was telling us of many things before and we was not listening. Praise God. So now, to go further, Earth is in a system called the solar system. The solar system. I want to teach you this because the Bible says that we must not hold anything from you. I need to show you what the Bible says. So whatever you're going through, I'm telling you that God is powerful. He's bigger than your sickness. He's bigger than your problem. He's bigger than whatever you're going through. God is bigger. This is our galaxy. Now, we are in that cluster going round and round and round. I want you to see the power of God here. Hallelujah. So that is the galaxy. Now, let me tell you something. There are trillions of other galaxies just like this, but only one with life, and that's the one that we have. Amen? Picture two. Right. Can you see this picture here? That, can you see the red line? Now, the red line is telling you the width of the galaxy. Please follow me because I want to show you the power of God and how powerful of God who we serve. We serve a powerful God. Now, that red line is 100,000 light years across. Now, you can do the maths. One light year is 5.8 trillion miles. Let it sink into your head. One light year is, to be precise, 5.88 trillion miles. So I'm transferring it from light years to miles so you can understand it. Okay? When we go to London, it's about 99 miles, isn't it? 100 miles. And it takes two hours. For us to travel from one end of our galaxy to the other end, we would never be able to do it. We would never be able to do it. Not with the vehicles that we have. That's why when we get to heaven, we're going to have a new body. Isn't that powerful? No wonder when Philip was preaching in one place, the Holy Ghost transported him and he was in another place immediately. You read it, it's in Acts chapter 8. Picture number 3. Can you see that red dot? That red dot is our solar system. What is in our solar system? The moon, the stars, the sun, and the other planets. Mars, Jupiter. Oh my, listen. Just in that little red dot. We need to know this. Because the Bible talks about how God stretches the Pleiades, the stars, and stretches it out and hang the earth on nothing. Amen. So that's where we are in our galaxy, or sometimes better known as our Milky Way. You heard of that? The galaxy and Milky Way are the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that powerful? Now I'm going to show you the sizes of the planets within our solar system, within that red little dot. Can you see this? Can you see the sun? Just a little bit of it. I couldn't put it all in because if I put it all in, there'd be no space. The sun is massive. It's gigantic. Next to the sun is Mercury. Next to Mercury is Venus. Next to Venus is our Earth. Now, if you look at these planets, they are in proportion with one another. Look how big the Earth is compared to Jupiter. Can you see Jupiter? Jupiter is massive. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says one day this earth is going to go away. And they're going to bring down a new heaven and a new earth. 
Amen. And the size of the city, say just the city. The size of just the city is more than half of the whole of the United States of America. Isn't that powerful? That, I'm just telling you that what the Bible says. You can read it. In, everything I'm teaching you, you can read it for yourself in the Bible. Are you learning something? So therefore, there's Saturn, there's Uranus, and there's Neptune. These are the planets in our solar system. Come on, say praise God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and he made all the planets and put them there for a reason. That has to be the power of God. That means if God can keep the sun, he can keep you. And the thing about it, the scientists are saying the world came from the Big Bang. Do you know the Big Bang? An explosion happened. And then after millions and millions and millions of years, it forms this. Okay? Now listen to this. Tell me. If you break up your watch or your mobile phone into thousands of pieces and you put it in a cup and you shake it up for a million years, do you think it will come back to be the phone? Well, that's what they're saying the Big Bang is. Who could this be but God himself? Come on, you should be shouting and jumping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is awesome. And the thing about it as well, let me stand this part. When the world turns, it's turning like this and it's moving around the solar system like this. That's why we get night and day. Now, according to the scientists, every single one of these planets should be turning the same way. But God says, if I cause them to turn the same way, they're going to say it was the Big Bang. That's what caused it to do that. So do you know what God did? God caused two planets by the name of Venus and Uranus to turn the complete opposite way. This is powerful. So everything should be turning this way. And going around the sun. Say this is the sun. And turning this way while it's doing it. That's why we get night and day. But then Venus is going around the sun but doing it the opposite way. And if you speak to any scientist really, they would say, we don't know what happened at the beginning. But the Bible says in the beginning, God created. He was God who created the heaven and the earth. Glory, hallelujah. We think we can fathom out God. You can't fathom God out. We have one moon for the earth. Do you know the moon is placed in a strategical place? The moon is responsible for the sea waves. Did you know that? And the moon affects the earth's atmosphere in a number of different ways, including atmospheric tides, air pressure, temperature, rainfall, climate, and the Earth's axis. Are you telling me that's a coincidence? Are you telling me that was a big bang? It was strategically placed by God. That's why the heaven declares, what do the word declares mean? The heaven is telling us the glory of God and the firmament the firmament is what we can see showeth his handiwork glory hallelujah praise God and so this is what's happening hallelujah there's so much more I can say about these planets because you know Saturn is mentioned in the Bible there are trillions of stars out there and God placed them there. God is saying, look what I've done. Don't you think, oh, with what I've done in space, I can do in your life? 
No wonder the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. It says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in the earth, the things that are visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Hallelujah. Job says in Job 38 and verse 31. It says, canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pallades, that's the stars and the planets, or loose the bands of Orion, that's the Orion belt, hallelujah. Canst thou bring Maseroth in its season? Maseroth is the 12 constellations. And it talks about other stars and planets. God mentions them all. This is a picture by NASA, and it's a photographic color picture. Those look like stars, but they're actually galaxies. Some are far away, some are close. So that's why I've got no problem when Jesus comes back and creates the new heaven and earth. There's going to be plenty of space. Hebrews 1 verse 2. Hath in these days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed, heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Isn't that powerful? Praise God. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, created the world. The problems that you're experiencing, the things that you're going through, God is saying, I'm bigger than that. Oh, come on, church. God is saying, I'm bigger than that. Put your trust in me. Follow me. Let me, let me tell you something. If I was born in the ages where I believed that the earth was hung on something, and the Bible tells me that the earth was hung on nothing. And I found out that the earth is actually hung on nothing. I would give my life to the Lord straight away. And before I go on to the sixth and final picture. If we go back to Romans chapter 1. Please. Go to verse 20. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 onwards. Look what it says. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen you can clearly see it being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so what the bible says so they are without excuse do you understand what that means god says when you stand before me on judgment day and you never gave me the worship God says you got no excuse because I've shown you my power. I've shown you what I can do. You've seen what I can do. And you prefer to believe man. Some of us put our trust in man-made things rather than God. There's a survey that went out not long ago. And they said that, they said that people find it more difficult to live without their phone but God is saying, these are man-made things. God says, can't you see what I've done? God says, I want to do great things in your life. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So they know God, you know, but they don't want to glorify him as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yes, I know what I'm doing, God. You, you, I know you created the heaven and the earth, but I know what I'm doing. God says, you think you're wise, you become fools. And what did they do? And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like the corruptible man and to birds, and to forfeited beasts, and to creeping things. So we worship those things more. 
Verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And verse 25 and last. And to change the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature. Glory, hallelujah. We serve the phone, the car, the house. Hallelujah. Anything that you put before God, you are putting it higher than God. You're worshipping it. You serve the creature more than the creator. God says, I created. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who is blessed forevermore. God is greater than your problem. No wonder the Bible says in Psalms 8, verse 3 and 4, God said, when I consider thy heavens, Hashayim, and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, David said, what is man that you art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. When we look at the stars and the moon and see what God has done. And then you wonder that God come down and sent his son and brought deliverance to us. We, David was saying, well, what is it, what's so special about me? Shall I tell you what's so special about you? God created you in his own image. God is saying... Listen, can't you see, when I told you I made you from the dust of the earth, and now your scientists are finding 28 elements, what's in the ground is in our body. Can't you see, God says you're going to be without excuse when you stand before God. Yeah, but God, I didn't know. But, uh, but I sent my preacher to preach to you. I sent the Bible to give to you. I sent my teacher to teach you. You are without excuse. Now, if there's a heaven, there is a hell. Nobody knows where hell is. But can I show you something? Can you put up, put up please, picture one again, please. Can you see this galaxy here, the Milky Way? If you look in the center of the Milky Way, it's so light. Can you see the light? It's so bright. Well, do you know what scientists call it? Listen to this. The black hole. You know that. Scientists says, well, why is it so light, but yet inside it's so dark? The Bible says there's going to be fire and brimstone. You can't have fire without light. But then the Bible also says there's complete darkness there. Now, I'm not saying it's here, you know. Don't get me wrong. I'll put this the third picture up, please, where we are with the red dot. We are right here. Right here. God says he's going to cast everything into hell and bring a new heaven and earth. Amen? Praise God. Now, let me make a disclaimer. I'm not saying hell is there. Amen? But I'm just saying, theologians describe it and say, well, there's fire and there's darkness, and that don't go together. There's complete darkness, but yet there's fire. We don't understand how that works. Yes? Amen. And the sixth picture, please. Praise God. I'm going to give you the sixth picture. This is a smaller picture. This is just telling us where the black hole is. Right in the middle of our galaxy. Of our galaxy. Amen. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God. Those who are in Christ Jesus, we escape hell. We escape hell. Amen. I'm here to let you know that God is greater than your problem. Amen. There are some people who are scientific. If you ask any scientist now, they don't know how on earth the earth came about. They can only speculate. But the Bible says, we know. We know. Brethren, 
Let's get serious with God. Let's get serious with God. Amen. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. Sometimes we fall. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says. A righteous man. What does righteous mean? One who is standing right with God. One who is perfect in the sight of God. A righteous man falls how many times? Seven times. But what does he do? Get back up again. Amen. That doesn't condone sin. Don't say I'll sin today and I'll get right with God tomorrow. Because that's now presumptuous sin. That's why the Bible says those who are born of God cannot sin. People always get confused with that. Because remember, God is a spirit. So when you're born of God, you're born of the spirit. The spirit. You're born of the what? So the minute your spirit is born, you are saved. Immediately. When you say, Jesus, come into my life. Help me get through my life, Lord. Forgive me for my sins. The spirit of God dwells with you immediately. None of us are worst worthy. But it's because of Jesus who makes me worthy. Do you know what righteousness is? Righteousness is like a cloak. Amen. So the Bible said that when Jesus died for us, he becomes our righteousness. So what happens is that Jesus does something. He clothes us. With his righteousness. Say his righteousness. So that when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. Amen. And he remembers that Jesus died for my brother. He died for my sister. When your brother falls, lift him back up. When your sister falls, lift them back up because we want hell empty and heaven full. Romans 14 verse 10, please. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why do thou set at naught thy brother? Listen to this. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I'm not in the business of judging people. We can judge with a righteous judgment. Yes, if somebody's doing something that's wrong and you can help them, you can sit down with them and say, no, that's wrong. That's good. That's righteous judgment. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 12. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even, my hands have stretched out the what? heavens and all their hosts that's the stars and the moon and the sun and all their hosts have I commanded amen so brethren the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork amen